sent the amended indictment to the email address bhartfield short uh, at forestcounty dot ms dot us shortly before voir dire as directed to by the court it's been it was emailed at 9 55 a.m um i apologize i sent the um when we were in hattiesburg your honor stated that we needed to get the indictment on file before we started voir dire i sent an email to um, the email address b hartfield um, at co.forest county i believe that's brooks email is that your email b hartfield. oh i was instructed to send it that's you told me to email it to b hartfield and that's what i did i emailed it to b hartfield as well as CCing um, Mr. Creekmore and Mr. Horan. So while there, I, that's what I did um, as instructed. Uh, I did assume that it was printed out. I wasn't sure whose email that was, but I was told to send to bhartfield at forestcounty.com. So that's what I did. Um, so I'll address that first. The amendment was completed and it was sent at 12, uh, on 12-2-2024 at 9.55 a.m. Um, before we started to select the jury. Um, now, I assumed it was printed out and given to the court and all of that as that was what was told to me to do. As to the argument of to the actual elements of the crime, as the court is aware, the um, standard for directed verdict is to take the evidence in the light most favorable to the state. Um, there's been ample testimony that this all happened on July 8th, 2022. Um, jurisdiction has been testified to by, um, I believe, Shane Fortner and a witness today, I believe, um, uh, Chief McCutcheon. He also testified to it. As to the element of death, we of course had to prove that uh, Jay Lee was a human being and that he was no longer alive. The court heard, te heard testimony from Jay Lee's mother who testified that he called her every day, he spoke every day. Um, his friends, who two at least, Khalid Fears and Jose Reyes, who testified that he they hadn't seen or heard from him since that day in July, or for Jose since July 7th, 2024, that he hadn't appeared on social media, that he regularly engaged in social media, possibly posed on, posted on social media every single day. We've heard testimony that his dog, whom he was very close to, um, whom he was very close to, was abandoned that he would take photo shoots with his dog, that he would take the dog everywhere with him, even to class, he wanted to take it to class, that the dog was abandoned. We heard testimony from officers regarding his financial accounts and his mother that to this day, those accounts remain untouched, that the last transactions that happened on those accounts was July 8th or July 7th, 2022, besides some accounts that had automatic charges that could happen without him. We heard testimony that he, um, there was no evidence that he had suicidal tendencies, that he was depressed, that he was unlike him to disappear on his own. Further, his ID, all his credit cards, um, his driver's license, things that he would need to be out into the world were all found within his vehicle on Molly Bar, at Molly Bar Trails, which was parked there at seven, on seven, eight, the same day he disappeared. Um, and towed the same day he disappeared. Um, we heard evidence that his apartment remained unpacked. Uh, all his possessions were still there. Uh, nothing was taken or removed. Um, Your Honor, we provided sufficient evidence to where a reasonable juror could determine that Jay Lee was no longer alive. As to the element of kidnapping, Your Honor, opposing counsel uh, defined there's three types of kidnapping. That's what the case law says. The theory by which the state proceeded under was a theory of inveiglement. Now, inveiglement specifically means to lure or entice 
through deceit or insincerity. Um, and there's no component of force, and it, you cannot forcibly inveigle, which is why the state was confused regarding all of the force talk. It is to essentially lure or convince someone to come to you uh, by being insincere, through trickery, or through deceit. In this case, Your Honor, the text conversation between Jay Lee and Timothy Harrington is very important. It actually starts off where we know that Jay Lee has left Timothy Harrington's apartment upset. We know that based on Timothy Harrington's recorded interview, where he stated that Jay Lee was mad when he left. We know that because Jay Lee blocked Timothy Harrington after he left, and people don't usually block people that they want to continue to communicate with. We also know that um, Jay Lee said something that could be perceived as mean to him, talking about how I nutted on your floor back to block. Following that, Jay Lee is communicated on an account that he doesn't recognize. We know he doesn't recognize because he says, who the F is this? Then, Timothy Harrington re-engaged us. He re-engaged Jay Lee. His first message to him was come back. But before he stated that, Your Honor, he calls him three times unanswered. Then there is one answered phone call through Snapchat for 14 seconds. Then Jay, the conversation then continues between the two. And at this point, we realize that Jay Lee knows that it's Timothy Harrington because they pick up their conversation back from when he was blocked. Your Honor, at this point, he, he asks, come back. Jay Lee says, no. He says, no. Tim Harrington continues to speak to him. Jay Lee responds with why he won't come back, again, indicating that he wasn't going to come over. And it's important what he said, because it wasn't just that Tim Harrington wouldn't perform oral sex on Jay Lee. In that message, Jay Lee describes having been treated poorly by Tim Harrington. He says uh, not only that he didn't reciprocate, but also he insulted Jay Lee by telling him to stop harassing him and telling him that they would stop linking, as in meeting up for sex. And this was immediately following their sexual encounter. That's why Jay Lee was upset, and it's laid out in that message. And then, Your Honor, he tells him he's gone too far. Jay Lee says to Tim, You've gone too far, and says, Good night. Again, Tim Harrington says that he doesn't want it to end like this. He tells him he's a, he tells Jay Lee he's a cool person. Jay Lee then says that his one condition to come back was if Tim would agree to give him oral sex. Now, per Tim's own interview, Tim Harrington's own statements, he invited Jay Lee back over to make it up to him. That's Tim Harrington's statements. Tim Harrington says Jay Lee was mad. Tim Harrington says he had to invite him back over and promise to make up to him. But what's really interesting, Your Honor, and what go goes to the deceit, trickery, or luring is that Tim Harrington also says in his interview that he never does that. He never performs oral sex on men. He says that he's never done it before. He says that Jay Lee usually comes over, but this time he's promising to do something he's never done before, which is what he says in his interview. That also came from Khalid Fears, that Jay Lee was going to do something sexually that had never happened to him before. Tim Harrington in his interview, after saying that he's going to do something he's never done before, when you think about that, Your Honor, the evidence in context of what's happened, Jay Lee had just left this man's apartment. This man had just told him, stop texting me had just told him, I don't want to see you anymore. Then, after Jay Lee says, I just wanted to be able to say, I had you BDL, and blocks him, suddenly, Tim Harrington is calling him over and over again, texting him over and over again, asking him to come over, to do something that Tim Harrington didn't want to do because he never did it before. Further as proof that he never wanted to do it, Your Honor. Jay Lee brings up, well, I'll come, but you know, you have to, I'm gonna have to get this in the front. 
And Tim Harrington, he, he just says, mm-hmm, in the text message. Then Jay Lee doesn't even know what that means. He says, okay, I'll do it. Because he never intended for Jay Lee to come over there for oral sex. The evidence could be perceived that way, Your Honor, and that's how the state reads it. It's very obvious. He never intended him to come over for sex. And then further evidence by that, and that he wasn't enthusiastic to do it, is that immediately following Jay Lee's agreement to come over, Tim Harrington Google searches how long does it take to strangle someone. Your Honor, even Jay Lee in the text was confused by Tim's repeated calling and texting and asking him to come over because he says, why are you doing this? It's like you're trying to lure me because that was not the tenor of their relationship. And that's very clear from the text message. And a jury that heard that could reasonably infer that. Your Honor, Tim Harrington, when you look at the evidence in whole, the conversation in totality, in combination with his interview. It's very clear that Tim Harrington didn't care about Jay Lee. When he asked him to come over, it wasn't because he wanted to be on good terms by doing something he never wanted to do in the first place. That was the insincerity, and that was the trick, that was the deceit. As we further move on in considering the theory of inveiglement, Your Honor, um, I would cite to the Moberg case, 303 Southern 3rd, 815. I believe opposing counsel said as to kidnapping, you know, he had to have the intent to keep him or snatch him. No, Your Honor, if the, the court looks to Moberg, in that case, they talk about how kidnapping is not a specific intent crime. The significance of the... Inveigling case started, started a couple of years ago. Was that it? No, this is actually newer, Your Honor. I believe this is from 2024. 2024. I knew the one uh, very recently. I probably, probably it anyway. Your Honor, they say the significance of the holding that no specific intent is needed is that the defendant need only to have the intent to cause the events that followed. In that case, all that happened was the defendant, Moberg, was upset that the victim had slept with his girlfriend. He told the victim, we're cool. Then he went over to the victim's house and he asked him to come help him with stuff. He asked him if he would help him move. Then the victim and the defendant drove from, I think it was Alabama to Mississippi because the victim voluntarily agreed to help him move. The victim was then killed in Alabama or sorry, in Mississippi, eventually his body was found, although no cause of death could be determined. Moberg appealed and said that there was no evidence of kidnapping. But as here, the victim voluntarily got into the defendant's truck under the guise that he was going to help the defendant move. Jay Lee did voluntarily go to Timothy Harrington's apartment but of course it was under the guise that Tim Harrington was going to perform oral sex on him. But again, Your Honor, the evidence put forth is that one, Tim Harrington has never done that before. Two, he didn't want to do it earlier in the night, so much so that he told Jay Lee, let's stop linking and stop harassing me. And three, that Tim Harrington only suddenly became interested in having Jay Lee come back over after Jay Lee blocked him and made the statement, I just wanted to be able to say, I had you BDL. And I would further state, Your Honor, that per the evidence provided, a reasonable, from the, that a reasonable juror could reach the conclusion that Tim Harrington, following Jay Lee coming over to his apartment, and that 728 time was important because that's when Jay Lee's phone completely cuts off, never comes back. That Tim Harrington is then seen taking this fantastical run that he describes in his interview, somehow getting into Molly Bar Trails without ever running into it, right after 
Jay Lee's car is parked at Molly Bar Trails. So I put forth, Your Honor, that the state has, in fact, put forth a prima facie case of death, kidnapping, and altogether capital murder. As to the indictment, Your Honor, I did what was directed to me. The issues on the uh, uh, South Dog Kennication issues or let the court handle them on his own? Uh, well, Your Honor, the court already ruled. I believe that ruling, I don't believe that that was the proper um, place for, or the proper subject of direct verdict argument. The court has ruled there was sufficient indicative of reliability for those documents. Um, it is not true that the only one tape would have come in. The campus walk videos, Your Honor, are from UPD testified to those. The campus walk, the campus videos, that's from the university. University police is in charge of the university. Those came in through the university. To the Renaissance Bank videos, the Renaissance Bank woman was here. The videos from the, um, the videos from the uh, uh, cleaner, the cleaner woman was here for that. Mr. Klink was here for the videos from his home. We called the witnesses. Um, the other videos, Your Honor, was the Walmart video. The Walmart representative was here. Um, so, Your Honor, that's not true that only one of these videos would have come in. Um, the witnesses were here to authenticate them. All right. I'll give you one beat free, free bottle. Yeah, Your Honor, first of all, the case that she cited in, involving the inveiglement, there was clear evidence as I understand the case she cited, Mr. Dagnall and I discussing, there was evidence of the exact purpose of the representation about the purpose of the trip getting that individual over there, which was false. There's nothing in this particular case, Your Honor. Mr. Beers testified that the man was going over there to have some fun. There's no misrepresentation to Mr. Lee as to what the intent was when they were coming over there. There's one, according to their state's witnesses, Your Honor, there's one and only one witness testified that the chief who wasn't involved in the investigation basically made reference to uh, I just wanted to be able to say I had you be, I had you be the DL again. Subject to multiple interpretations, how in the world are we going to move forward on an embegglement case when the state has presented their proof that that is the evidence of inveiglement, Your Honor, during the course of the conversations between these two individuals. I can't imagine moving forward with that scant amount of evidence uh, going forward with a capital murder case where every Chief McCutcheon said that he couldn't present any evidence previous to the eighth day that they'd had any conversations that supported that my client had lured him over there, that had any other arguments or anything like that, Your Honor. Right. The second wow. thing on the 902, the only tape that would have come in would have been the body cam. The argument is that the procedure that was followed, Your Honor, was an improper procedure. That evidence, I know the courts ruled on, on it. Should, on those, those Dennis Grenada, I think that the, I don't think the, the rule doesn't require that the uh, that there not be self authentic that you can't put them in. It just means you have to bring authentication, right? No, Clint could testify, Your Honor, but what evidence at the time without the other videos show any crime? What evidence without the other videos and the Oxford videos showing a boxcar going down the road supports a conviction? If the court went back in chambers and said, you know what, I probably didn't do it right on that 902. I'm not. I know you're not. No. But, but my point being, and I no disrespect to the court, but there's nothing in that rule that talks about indicia of reliability. It's not in there, Your Honor. All right, I'm ready. You, unless you got anything else? I don't mean to cut you off. I can't think of anything else. All right. But, uh, All right, I'm going to make, uh, I'm just time. No, hold on, Judge, one more thing about this order on this indictment. I hope we're not going down that path today that on a capital murder case that you can email an order, amend an indictment somewhere, and stay here nine days and not get it filed and signed by the court before the close of the state's case. 
or even the start of the case, to be honest with you. I hope we're not going down that path, Your Honor. Thank you. Here we go. Uh, as to the uh, self-authentication uh, matters of, of videos, the uh, court thinks it got it right. Uh, and I think I'm, we've made a record on this before, but I'll, I'll go back and, and, and sort of recap that. The state, um, the state filed its notice of, of self-authentication. Uh, the defense uh, filed a response in, in our court files. It was in a required time. You filed it within the retired time. The uh, state indicated that they did not get that notice uh, uh, that uh, the, the defense was objecting until uh, it caught, was brought to their attention on Monday, was two weeks ago when we were having court in Ripley. We talked about this in chambers. That was Monday before Thanksgiving. Uh, we uh, Court said we'll deal with it when when we we can have time. The uh, the court took it as I, we were having a hearing on it. Uh, as to those uh, videos that the court was found were all here uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, on a a short route, uh, all in, in close proximity in time all in, uh, in a, a route known to the, to the court. Court found that those uh, I was going to, if I had had a formal hearing on the record, I would have allowed those documents to be self-authenticating. Uh, TAM didn't permit it uh, from the time the state, uh, a formal hearing from the time the state uh, found out that there had been an objection to the uh, to the current time, if the court is wrong on that, I think there's still sufficient evidence and other means of this court that uh, uh, phone records, Snapchat records, uh, records from Walmart that there was self-authenticating uh, that there was authentication made, uh, police department. Uh, university cameras and things like that that the case could have survived a motion direct verdict even if the court is was be deemed wrong about that as to the sufficiency of the evidence anymore i think the case the state has set forth a prima facie case that uh, that mr harrington was alive that he is no longer alive there's a problem there's a uh, uh, prima facie case that he came to his death at the hands of uh, Mr. Harrington. The jury could see it that way. The jury could see it another way. They made a prima facie case. They've also made a prima facie case that occurred in Lafayette County on July the 8th and, um, and they've made a prima facie case based on the text messages that I call them, communications uh, between these two parties that uh, there could have been uh, uh, luring in this case. Uh, don't know that it, uh, that'll be for the jury to decide, but they've made a prima facie case. As to the issue of, uh, of amendment of the indictment, the court uh, on the record uh, ordered uh, that the, uh, allowed, ordered that the indictment be amended that it uh, uh, court found that the statute required the code section of the underlying crime uh, in a capital murder case be uh, included in the indictment. Court further found that there's only one code section for kidnapping in the indictment, uh, that there's no surprise to the defense it can no way it could change uh, or affect the the defense in this matter with the fact that those few numbers 
uh, for the kidnapping section, uh, code section be included in the indictment. Kidnapping is kidnapping is kidnapping in Mississippi. There's no different uh, statutes for kidnapping. Court allowed the indictment to be amended to include the code section number for the kidnapping. I direct and I ordered that the indictment be amended. I, uh, this court has no knowledge other than what's been uh, reported to the court this morning that it was emailed. We were in Hattiesburg, uh, uh, in Hattiesburg, picking a jury for this for this case. State indicated when and where they emailed it to, uh, and I, um, I'm going to uh, deny uh, your motion for uh, direct verdict in this case. Uh, you, make, you can make any further record you'd like. Your Honor, I think I need to clear up that um, the order failing to amend the indictment motion for directed verdict would be that the court should grant it alternatively would be that due to the fact that the indictment wasn't amended that it would move forward to the jury on uh, since the kidnapping aspect would be the kidnapping aspect would not be a viable it would go to the jury on murder as opposed to if the court found the prima facie showing had been made. Well, I'll ask the, for the state to make a response to that. They, they may, they may be willing to confess that anyway. I don't know. I'm not, court, uh, the court is not going to, uh, uh, if the state wishes to uh, move forward without the kidnapping, uh, I'll allow them to, uh, but if they don't, I'm going to play the cards we got, okay? That I'm yes, going sir. to. All right. Let the parties both know what you've uh, what you've uncovered there, anyway. Uh, apparently, apparently the uh, I'm not going to make any comment on that on the record. If anybody else wants to, they can, okay? Your Honor, based on what I've uh, been provided, my understanding of sin is not anything close to an order amending the indictment and not signed. I will say for the record, I have not signed an order amending the indictment. I have made a pronouncement from the bench that, for, so the record's clear, I have not signed an order amending the indictment. I have pronounced from the from the bench that the indictment would would uh, would be amended. For for the record, that's that's where we stand anyway. Okay. I understand. All right. Um, it's twelve thirty. We uh, we got another hour, uh, and um, we will uh, unless there's something else. Will the state, you think the defense be ready to move forward? Uh, I would like to cover this right now in case I forget it later. Uh, Mr. Harrington, I, I'm going to direct these, uh, this, this line of thoughts to you personally, not necessarily to your, uh, to your attorneys. Uh, the state has rested its case. You, uh, you have the right to put forth testimony in your defense. You have the right not to. You have the right to testify in your own defense, or you have the right not to. If you choose to testify, you'll be subject to cross-examination by the state. If you choose not to testify, the jury will be instructed that the fact that you did not testify could not be used as any evidence of any that you were guilty of any crimes. The decision of whether you wish to testify or not to testify 
is your decision. It's not the decision of your attorney. I encourage you to consult with them. They've been in this game a long time and know what they're doing. But ultimately, the decision to testify or not to testify will be your decision. I'm not going to ask you what that decision is at this time, but at some point uh, uh, when, uh, before the trial is over, assuming assuming you're putting forth other witnesses, uh, which I un understand you are, but even then, uh, when you've called any other witnesses, I'll ask, I want uh, you to be prepared to tell the court whether you wish to testify or not to testify, okay? All right? All right.